Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today is another Foundation Nation video and I got a request to do this foundation. This is the number seven Hydro Luminous uh, Moisturising Foundation. It's actually really weird because when I put my first video up, the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover Foundation, I'll link it up here in the eye somewhere, um, someone actually commented can you do a review on this? And it's really weird because I was actually already testing this out. So this has jumped the queue and this is gonna be the next review on the Foundation Nation series. Um, like I said, the number seven Hydroluminous Foundation, it came out, I'd say earlier this year, I want to say March. Is it March or is it more February time? I want to say like that time of year um, and it's only, I've only just come around to doing a review on it but I have fully tested this out to the point where I might need to buy another one. Um, that's like a sneak peek of how much I've used this foundation um, but let's just get into the details. So starting off with price, this foundation it retails for £15 in boots and I think you can buy it on the number 7 website. I've got my laptop here. Yeah, you can buy it from the number 7 website as well so that's the two exclusive places that you can buy it from. I think £15 is a very fair price. You get 30 mil or one fluid ounce which is very normal for any foundation um i think drugstore prices between like eight and 15 pounds i think is very fair i think past the 15 pound mark we're starting to approach that high-end sort of category like benefit smashbox and above you know that sort of category so i think 15 pounds is very fair for the amount you get in this it does come with a matching concealer and um, this is the hydro luminous dark circle concealer it's like a twisty with a foam nib if i just show you like that kind of like the maybelline one but that's like a firm one whereas the maybelline one is like a hairier one and it really hydrates this one is like a firm nib this review isn't about this concealer but i mean it's not my favorite packaging i must say it's a bit too hard for my liking this is the third concealer that number seven have got on their range i'm looking on their website now and i cannot see another concealer they've got the match made concealer and the instant radiant under eye concealer which is like the brush tip touche class sort of take um, and this is their third concealer this retails for 14 pounds so it's the same price as their instant radiant uh, like brush tipped one. Um, I won't be reviewing this today but I kind of will just give you some demonstrations of me putting it on now. It's a nice concealer and I actually really did like it. I did put it all over my face one day just to see what it looks like and it's actually really nice. Um, obviously £14 if you're going to put that all over your face just as your foundation that's not a very cost effective thing to do but I actually really like this concealer. I wouldn't say like I'd run out and go buy it but um, I'm definitely going to use it and I definitely enjoy using it. I just probably wouldn't repurchase it again because it wasn't life changing. It was just nice and hydrating under the eyes. If you suffer from dry under eyes then perhaps you'd like this. It was nice. Nothing to write home about but equally like if I got presented this again I'd be happy about it. It's, it's a nice concealer. It's just not like the best, you know? So going back to the foundation, as you can see, it's in a squeezy tube. It comes with like this metallicalized, metallicalized, metallic uh, lid. And it just screws off like this to reveal just a squeezy flat tipped applicator. Just like the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover Foundation, this is not a see-through bottle. I don't know if the camera is going to focus. There we go. It's not a see-through bottle and you can tell just by like the crack here and in the nib. Even though it's not see-through, you can kind of get a good sort of idea of what the shade looks like. Personally, I think it's a pretty good shade match for what is on my face. Apart from that, I've got to say the packaging is pretty nice um, and I'd say it's very grown up. It's not girly. It's not cutesy. It's very... It's grown up. I feel like you could be 50, you could be 70, you could be 20 and still wear this foundation and it still have it in your bag and not look like a child's foundation. It looks nice and I think it's very grown up. It's very number seven, very on brand. I quite like it um, and that's pretty much all I've got to say about the packaging. It's just it's very nice. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about shade range. There are 12 shades to this foundation. I'll put them up here for you now. Um, you're probably thinking 12. Who? What? 2019. What are we doing? Um... <sighs> I don't like the shade range, okay? I do not like the shade range. I don't think it's inclusive. I don't think it's in proportionate. I don't think it's accurate at all. Um, and by that, I mean, when you have 12 shades in a luminous, sheer coverage, BB cream-like, very, you know, very slippy, very sheer foundation, I think it's fine. Personally, I think having smaller shade ranges for that type of foundation is acceptable, as long as you're inclusive. If there was four light, four medium, four deep dark, I'd be totally happy with it. For me, this is a light to medium skin tone foundation because the deep dark just does not exist. Um, the Stay Perfect foundation that they've got has a 25 shade range, which for the drugstore I feel like is a really incredible thing. Um, and there's like definite shade range between that. So I don't understand, I don't understand why they've missed out on that category at all. And like I said, I don't want this to be received in a different way than how I mean it but you don't have to have a 30 to 50 to 100 shades in a luminous, slippy foundation. You don't have to have it. It's not necessary. You can fit 
three skin tones per one foundation when you're talking sheer, when you're talking slippy, when you're talking luminous. When you're talking a matte foundation and a full coverage foundation, you need those shade ranges and you need those in-between undertones and deep, dark, light, medium, you know, fair. You need all those things. You need that shade range because it's colour matching to the skin. You've got a little bit more slip, you've got a little bit more give with a foundation like this. However, I do not think that is an excuse to miss out on a whole shade range. You know, like I said, I'd be far happier with this collection if it was light, medium, dark. I know it's 2019 and we're not used to being this basic, but if you're going to do a small shade range, at least be inclusive within that small shade range. That's all I'm going to say. So the claims here in front of me say that this foundation is a visibly fresh and radiant looking skin in an instant and it provides an even better bare skin over time. This moisturising foundation gives a flawless natural finish and a healthy all day glow, where it every day and over time your skin looks fresher, healthier and more luminous. Skin loving ingredients include an active blend of antioxidants, vitamins A, C and E together with grapeseed oil to provide moisture. After four weeks use, 90% of people said their bare skin looked healthier, 90% of people said their skin felt more moisturised, and 84% of people said their bare skin looked brighter, and it's suitable for sensitive skin. I think a lot of these claims are actually true to their word. Um, throughout using this foundation, I definitely felt like my skin didn't feel dry. Um, some foundations do make me feel a bit, you know, like a bit, oh kind of itchy and kind of like oh you want you know I, I how, do, how do you describe that facial expression like just kind of tight wanting to take my foundation off wanting to take my makeup off because I feel like it's on my face after a while this foundation didn't do that to be fair I think they are true to what they say in a lot of the claims so I don't think they've over egged anything too much it's definitely a moisturizing foundation it definitely looks plump it definitely looks healthy on my skin I feel like my skin looks great I feel like it looks truly healthy and doesn't look cakey at all and I definitely look for that in a foundation and it obviously has skin loving ingredients with a c and e vitamins and the grapeseed oil which is known for being very moisturized I think it's true to what it says. It's very moisturising, it's very plumping, it's very healthy looking. Um, I'm not sure if it made my skin look healthier and like better for it. I wouldn't really market this as a... I wouldn't market this as like a skin care ingredient or anything like that but I think it's definitely a better foundation for my skin than others have been. As far as application goes the buffing brush is on my left side and the sponge is on my right as you'll see on the screen. I think application was pretty equal both ways. I found that the foundation being blended in by the buffing brush came off a little bit streaky but it was definitely workable if like a stippling and then buffing approach was taken and I think that's just because of the nature of the foundation it's quite a slippy luminous foundation so I kind of expected that from the brush I think with the sponge it looks pretty nice and kind of the finish looked really seamless and perfect but I definitely say you get more coverage with the brush than with the sponge so personally for me I actually liked having the brush to kind of apply it all and then a sponge just to go over it to kind of flatten it all out and I do like that with a lot of foundations in all fairness like I prefer to apply it with a brush get it all over my face first and then go in with a sponge so it's not taking away too much coverage it's just kind of finishing and polishing the face off nicely so that's how I like to apply it. As far as primer goes obviously I apply my moisturiser all over my face anyway and then I apply my primer on the right side of my face to show the difference. Again I feel like this foundation does not need a primer. Um, I found longevity wise it didn't make too much of a difference but in places where I usually lose my foundation like my jawline I found that the primer did help that. But in all honesty, I don't think you need a primer to make this foundation look good. I don't think you need it. It's not a necessity. Um, I probably would recommend if you have got dry skin, just moisturising your face. I'd recommend that anyway. But I'd say it just makes the skin look nicer. And when you're applying like a glossier foundation, just having a hydrated face just looks nice anyway. So personally for me, I don't mind either way. I don't mind the application of the primer or the moisturiser or both. I don't mind it. I think it, it's either or. I'm not here nor there about it. So yeah, just as a roundup, I do prefer to apply it with a brush and then kind of stamp over it with a sponge. Again, if I was in a pinch, I wouldn't mind if I didn't have either. I could kind of just use one or the other. I'm not really bothered. And I'm kind of the same with the primer. I'm not bothered if I have it or not. It's very easy to use. It's a very easy, forgiving foundation. So with that being said, I'm going to roll the clip of my first impressions with the primer and um, wearing the foundation all day. Okay, guys, so this foundation has been on now for eight and a half to nine hours. And oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Like my skin just looks like skin. Obviously, when you get up close, like this close, you can tell that I've got foundation on. But from about here, which is the distance from which people will be, like you're not really going to get any closer than this. It looks so 
glowy and just so skin like this is like nearly nine hours it's closer to nine hours and eight and a half and i just feel like the skin looks so nice like my forehead looks lovely and um, i have got highlighter on so please ignore that i did have a nap on this side which might be why it's like patched a little bit um but this side i didn't and it looks lovely here i mean the nose i did blow my nose so it might be a little bit red here but it's not bad and between my eyebrows you guys look at this so this is what it's looking like close up it's not sitting into my frown lines which is a big thing for me usually every foundation sits into those so that's really cool i'd say it's a medium coverage um it's kind of got like a dewy finish as you can see in the light there you can see a little bit of texture like pimples things like that um i am wearing the primer so the pores aren't looking bad but sometimes even with the primer sometimes pores can be a little bit exaggerated by different foundations but this is looking all right. Like I said, I did blow my nose, so ignore that a little bit. But to be honest, it's not looking, it's not looking overly like crusty in there. Do you know what I mean? Um, and the under eyes are looking quite nice as well. The concealer is quite nice. I wouldn't say it's the best concealer, but it's like quite a nice concealer. My chin is looking very normal. I've got a little bit of transfer here. I mean, I did have a nap, so maybe it transferred a little bit. I haven't noticed the foundation slipping and sliding about. I didn't notice um, like hand on face or on my clothes or anything. So I don't think it's a heavy transfer. I just think obviously if you nap and it's going to get warm, it's not completely transfer proof, but it doesn't claim that. So that's fine. Um, and it still looks nice. It's not patched off ugly. I just, I can tell that it's patched off a little bit because I know I've gone for a nap um, on this side, not on this side. So I'm really enjoying this. Like this is really really lovely foundation it's just really looking nice that concealer mm, i sit on the fence with it i think it's lovely i don't think it's the best concealers i'd probably say it's a better concealer for a more mature skin because it's quite thin um it reminds me a little bit of the maybelline age rewind but a little a little bit thinner um but yeah it's nice i'm loving it so far we're nine hours in we're, we are nine hours in now and it's looking just as nice as when I put it on, which is totally the goal with makeup, isn't it really? So really, really happy with how it's looking. So as you can tell, the foundation looked pretty good all day with the primer. Now I'm gonna roll the clip of the foundation without the primer after it's being worn all day. Okay, so nine and a half hours in, nearly 10. Um, the foundation is looking pretty good. We have no primer on. I've got a spot right under there. It's like under the skin, you know, the ones that haven't surfaced yet. Oh my God, it's so painful and so red. So it's done a pretty good job at covering that all day. Like you can kind of see it, but it's nothing really that noticeable. It's patched off a little bit here on my jawline, but I think that's just where I've been resting um, I've been at work all day so I think I've just been resting on my jaw a little bit but it's looking pretty good remember we have no primer on I have layered other products like a highlighter um, bronzer and blusher so I have got all those other products on but between the brows here it's looking I mean it's, it's settling into fine lines a little bit just here and here but it's not really settled into anywhere around my mouth under my eyes do look a little bit dry just an absolute smidgen I need to do my nails absolutely horrific um it's looking a little bit dry under my eyes but i do have quite dry under eyes but apart from that i feel like it just looks quite natural like if you just ignore the uh like the patchiness here and you just like look at this cheek bit here it actually looks all right it looks really nice i'm really enjoying this and it's lasted a good amount of time like 10 hours in an aircon environment i'm pretty impressed so obviously that being said, you can obviously tell that I really enjoy this foundation. I'll just talk about a few positives and negatives I found and my experience with this foundation. Um, good things is that it's glowy. I love it. It just makes my skin look so healthy and I feel like my skin doesn't look like a greasy hot dog glowy. It doesn't look like I'm sweating, but it just looks like... I mean, I am sweating, but, <laughs> but I just feel like it just looks really healthy and that my skin is really like natural and radiant without me looking too overly highlighted or overly sweaty. Some days I'd like to look matte, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I just like to look really natural and really healthy. It doesn't cling to dry patches and that's something that I really do look for in a foundation, being a dry skin person, as you well know. Um, dry patches can make a foundation look really cakey and if a foundation isn't clinging to them, it kind of aids the whole look of the whole face. Sometimes I've worn foundations that look fine everywhere else, but they've clinged to a dry patch and the whole thing looks cakey. So it doesn't cling to dry patches, so it doesn't therefore look cakey, especially if you're dry skinned, you'll, you'll know you'll know the pain. It doesn't transfer, it does feel tacky on the skin, like I won't lie to you, it feels tacky, but it doesn't transfer at all, like there's no transfer. I've had naps with this on and it doesn't really look like it's transferred on the pillow or anything like that, so that's actually really cool for a glowy foundation to not 
excessively transfer obviously you're going to get a little bit of transfer naturally with any foundation you kind of get that but not to the point where i see it so that's a really cool thing for me it blended beautifully onto the skin like i said it, it was like a no fuss foundation you could have had a brush you could have had a sponge you could have had both you could have had a primer you could have had moisturizer you could have had none or both i feel like it's just it kind of just works with whatever you've got and i really appreciate that and products laid beautifully on top of it as well like i haven't got any powder on my cheeks i've just got my blush straight onto my cheeks and it blended beautifully it didn't pick up or anything so products really do lay nicely on top of this foundation and i think that is something to point out for a glowy foundation foundation to not be set and for products to look nice on top I mean I think it says a lot now of course with anything there's gonna be a few negatives um, and there aren't actually a lot for this foundation but the thing that annoys me the most is the shade range now <sighs> the nature of this foundation means that it doesn't have to be a 50 shade shade range okay I know I said in my previous video that it's 2019 and that 20 shades wasn't good enough and 20 shades is just about good enough for a full coverage matte foundation that's what the Maybelline claims to be okay so I don't want to think I'm changing my view on this but when you've got a luminous foundation it doesn't have to be an extensive shade range you can make you can make one shade work for a few skin tones that does not excuse the fact that a whole shade range has been missed in my view um, I'm really not impressed with 12 shades because I think it does have enough coverage to need more. I think even if this foundation had 15 shades, which is only three more than it's got, it's still considerably low for this like day and age, but if those 15 shades were inclusive in the sense that everyone, everyone was represented in categories, I wouldn't be so mad. I'd feel like at least, like, <laughs> at least you're trying to hit someone in those categories do you know what I mean like I feel like you can definitely you can always start somewhere and then bulk out I feel like when you've missed a category completely I think it's obnoxious I think it's obnoxious when you miss out a category completely and I'm really disappointed by number seven because I just didn't think that they would do that um I know that they're not known for having the best shade range in the deeper complexions I won't be oblivious to that but I think for a new foundation launching in 2019 they've really they've really missed the mark on that one i feel like even a few even a few in deeper shades would have been better i mean i'm the third from the lightest so i feel like that's pretty that's pretty good usually like normally i'm the lightest or the second lightest so i feel like there's no excuse for having a complete lack of shade range on the other side of the spectrum i'm i'm not happy about it and it gets on my nerves because it's a really great foundation and everyone should be able to try it so for those that aren't familiar of my Foundation Nation rules as such, I rate the foundation out of five at the end of each video. Um, of course, this is just my personal view and this is just how I had the experience with the foundation and what I think. This by no means is probably good for oily skin people, but I try to provide as much information as I can. Um, but of course, I am dry, sometimes normal depending on the weather, so just know that. I might be rating it, but it might be completely opposite to what you would rate it with a different skin type. But this is just... This is just my opinion, okay? So a one star out of five would be bad, wouldn't recommend it for anyone, very unsatisfactory. A two out of five stars would be poor, wouldn't recommend it, and it was below my expectations. A three out of five stars is it's fair, I would recommend it, and it met my expectations, as in it was as good as I thought it was gonna be. A four out of five stars is a good, and I can confidently recommend this foundation, and it was above my expectations. And a five out of five stars is excellent, I'd highly recommend it, it was outstanding, and you need it in your life. So what do I give my little pal over here, the Hydroluminous Foundation, by number seven? Well, oh my goodness, it, it irks me. It irks me to give this a five out of five stars, which is what I'm gonna give it but it irks me to do so because uh, I love it so much but like oh that shade range like number seven if you could improve on that shade range bring out five more shades bring out three more shades I don't care bring out something for our deeper darker girls out there I'd be like cool you know at least you've done something I'm happy it irks me and I want to give it four I want to say it's good and I'd recommend it but Mm, I love this foundation so much like I'm gonna I'm gonna go repurchase a couple of these in case like <laughs> something happens because I love it um, and it's definitely been something I've been gravitating towards when I'm trying other foundations out that aren't going so successfully um, and that says a lot to me when I'm reaching for this over a foundation that I probably should be using because I'm reviewing it you know I know I know it like it irks me to give something a five out of five 
um, because I don't want to throw those five out of fives willy-nilly because I truly mean it when I say this foundation is amazing but that shade range man oh god it brings it down almost like a 4.5 out of 5 but I'm not going to do that um but if that shade range was improved then I'd say this was like whoa top of the drugstore especially for my dry skin girls I'd say if you're oily if you powdered this down just moisturized and powdered this down um it could be very nice and healthy looking I don't know how oily people get with luminous foundations obviously I'm not oily I've never experienced that but I'd say it's definitely worth a try if your friends got it try it um oh my goodness I love this so much and it irks me it irks me that the shade range is so bad because the formula is amazing for the price it's accessible Oh, and it's just so fuss free it's just so fuss free so that's what I'm going to give it five out of five stars hopefully you don't come with your pitchforks and fire um at me because the shade range is so bad but mm, that's what I want to give it I'm sorry I'm sorry that's what I'm gonna give it so yeah that's the end of this video I've like broken out in red hot can you see how red my chest is this is what happens when I get nervous and like scared look how red my chest is oh my god uh yeah sorry I feel I feel like people are gonna hate on me for giving it five out of five with a shade range like that I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please do not forget to give it a thumbs up hit subscribe and ring my bell if you have not already join my little join my little YouTube family um I'll probably be uploading one of these foundation nations at least once a month I'm aiming for twice but let's not let's not set the bar too high ladies and gents so I'm aiming to get at least one of these once a month um if there's a foundation you would like me to try out please do not forget to pop that down below obviously do take into account that I do test the foundation for a whole week so if you recommend a foundation now um I have a week from when I see your comment to test it out so do not think that it'll be like maybe the next one because I want I want that time to try it out so yeah Thank you guys for watching once again. I really, really do appreciate it. I'm going to go have a shower now from the nerves that are in me. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. And then with a screw off bottom. Whoops. Erbling, Erbling what? <laughs> it's hot. It be, it, it. Why am I so nervous? Why am I so nervous? This is not normal.